It is that time of year again. Apple is about to launch the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro. So of course, there are plenty of rumors covering everything from design to hardware changes and release dates. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about everything you need to know about the iPhone 15. Let's jump right in. First, let's talk about the most basic thing. What is the iPhone 15 going to look like? If we're talking about the bone standard iPhone 15 and 15 Pro, rumors suggest that there will be slight changes to the design, but overall, the look will be very similar to last year. The edges of the device could be slightly rounded compared to the squared off profile we've seen from the past couple of generations. While it'll be a subtle effect, it should make the phone more comfortable to hold. There are also hints of new colors as well. We're talking green, a light yellow, and pink, according to a leak on Weibo and corroborated by reputable leaker Shrimp Apple Pro. I said corroborated. Corroborated. I can't say that word. <laughs> Plus, it looks like you'll also get color matched braided cables as well in the box. But on the whole, the iPhone 15 gets a lot of hand-me-down features from the iPhone 14 Pro. Most notably, it will include the A16 SoC and potentially the 48 megapixel main camera sensor. However, probably the biggest change to the standard 15 and 15 Plus will be the addition of the dynamic island. While the usefulness of this feature has been hotly debated since the 14 Pro's launch last year, bringing it to the rest of the lineup makes a lot of sense. It's hardly an essential feature, but at the very least, it doesn't hurt to have and makes the iPhone 15 feel closer to a new iPhone, something that the vanilla 14 struggled to do. Now jump to the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, and the upgrades look way more substantial. According to recent leaks, the iPhone 15 Pro is going to be a beast for performance and efficiency thanks to the Apple A17 SoC. It's said to be Apple Apple's first chip built on TSMC's 3 nanometer process with a 6 core CPU that's clocked at 3.7 gigahertz and a 6 core GPU. All this to say, a sizable performance bump and better efficiency compared to last year. Storage could also see a good bump as well, with the iPhone 15 Pro starting with 256 gigs instead of the 128 gig base on the 14 Pro. Samsung already offers this on the high-end S23 Ultra, so hopefully Apple ends up matching that. The iPhone 15 Pro will also most likely get a needed refresh in the looks department. Just like the standard 15, the edges will more than likely be rounded and more comfortable to hold, but the key visual difference here will be a move from stainless steel to matte titanium for the frame, which should make the phone a lot lighter and look a lot better. I know a lot of people use cases on their phone, but for those of us that go naked, no more smudges. The usual colors, black, gold, and silver, are looking to make a return this year, but there are rumors of a deep red colorway making the rounds, which is pretty cool. Speaking of the frame, rumors are also suggesting that the mechanical alert slider will be replaced by an action button that is customizable and context aware. Not only will this allow you to toggle between silent, vibration, and ring, but it can also act as your shutter button in the camera app or be able to trigger shortcuts. Personally, I'm excited to see this, though I'm sure there will be people missing the ability to toggle a physical switch without looking at their phone. And then there's the screen which is rumored to have a slimmer bezel. We're talking 0.5 millimeters thinner, which should make the front look very slick. But the upgrade I'm looking forward to the most is with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, or iPhone 15 Ultra, if Apple decides to change the name of the larger phone. The top of the line flagship phone is expected to have an even bigger 48 megapixel sensor to help with low light performance and give you shallower depth of field. But the Pro Max or Ultra will exclusively feature a periscope telephoto lens capable of a five to six X optical zoom. This would be epic since the current three X setup doesn't ever feel like it's enough. Being able to get a tighter shot without losing resolution sounds awesome and would help clearly distinguish it from the 15 Pro in the lineup. Now we can't talk about iPhone 15 rumors without mentioning the port situation. This year, Lightning will be replaced with USB-C on all iPhone 15 models. This is something we've already been anticipating for over a year, all thanks to regulation forced onto Apple by the EU. 
Thanks, European bros. Hola, EU. Por que no los ports? <laughs> While it sucks that our lightning accessories will eventually be a thing of the past, in the long run, I think this is a big dub for the consumer. So much of our tech these days are already run off USB-C. So having the ability to mix and match cables between all of our devices is sure to make our lives a bit more convenient. What's even sweeter is that some models of the iPhone 15 might even charge at up to 30 5 watts, up from 20 watts last year, according to some rumors. According to veteran Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, we should see the 15 Pro and Pro Max benefit from 20 gigabit transfer over USB 3.2, though some sources state that the iPhone 15 Pro Max might get Thunderbolt 4 instead, increasing the overall throughput to 40 gigabit. For those of us that use the iPhone for creative video work, this will be especially handy for ProRes recording, which yields improved image quality at the cost of enormous file sizes. Currently on my 14 Pro Max, given AirDrop's sketchy reliability with larger files, and USB 2.0 Lightning just being stupid slow, the ability to shoot ProRes is basically useless. But with the 15 Pro and Pro Max, things are looking up. However, just because USB-C is more universal doesn't mean Apple is loosening its grasp on the accessories market. You see, lightning cables are already a surprisingly lucrative business for Apple, counting for $5 billion in sales and licensing to third-party brands. So one way they can keep making this money moving forward is to carry over its MFI certification program to USB-C, starting with the iPhone 15. For those that don't know, MFI is a certification Apple supplies for lightning accessories, which guarantees first and third party products 100% support with iPhones. However, with USB-C, arguably it's a little less important given that the industry already figured out standards for power delivery and data rate years ago. In all fairness to Apple, MFI can help the company maintain a level of security against USB-C exploits on the iPhone. But on the flip side, there are genuine concerns that Apple could throttle power and data on non-MFI USB-C cables, which would kind of suck in my opinion. Honestly, they should just let the user decide whether or not the risks are worth it, and the EU has already warned Apple against nefarious moves like this. But would it really be Apple to even give us a choice? Nope. Nope. Absolutely not. And finally, there is the release date and price for the iPhone 15 series. As of the recording of this video, Apple is rumored to announce a bunch of new products, including new Apple Watches, on September 12th, with products shipping around September 22nd. Though supposedly there's a potential delay with Pro Max slash Ultra due to complications with the periscope lens. As for price, the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus are looking to be the same price as last year, retailing at $799 and $899 in the US, while the 15 Pro and Pro Max will likely see a bump, starting at $1099 and $1299 respectively. While price hikes are never a fun thing, Thing, this should help define the lines between this year's iPhone 15 lineup. But let me know, what do you think about these iPhone 15 rumors in the comments below? And also subscribe to the channel for more Apple coverage. We're going to be reviewing the iPhone 15 once it comes out.